What do you want? Who? How's it? How's it, everybody? Hang loose. Aloha. Welcome to Mongoose Max Hawaii, the channel. And today we're with Michael, and we're going to talk about, I don't know, belief system, belief, whatever we believe, ghost stories, if we think of Halloweeny stuff. Yeah, weeny stuff, Halloweeny stuff. <laughs> He's quiet right now. <laughs> Anyways, so we're doing the live thing, so we're going to try not to swear. And we're broadcasting from the, you know, backyard deal so you can see the sunny breezy i hope this thing don't fall into the thing so if we look into your eyes it's right up here ah <sighs> yes so. welcome everyone welcome are we live we've been live for about three minutes oh for i am back from my research paper okay great he lives he's researching h happy halloween everyone check out this Check out this skeleton behind us with some muscle left. It is wearing a Halloween in the spirit of the Halloween hat. It's got that's a Bucky. pumpkin hat. That's Bucky, my loyal viewers. No, that's Bucky. Bucky, okay, Bucky. Great. <laughs> what an honor to be here. <laughs> and this is the microphone, too. So it has a, a, a I don't know, a, a covering for the wind. We're hoping that dampens wind sounds. Great, great, great. All right. As we get started here, I'm trying to get as low as I can to the microphone. But uh, hello, everyone. How, this is fun, actually. This is fine. Okay, maybe. It... All right. Ah, anybody from our audience? Because I know we're not going to have our, our like viewer chat thing. But if you're in the chat room, just I don't know, let's write anything down there. You got zero, but zero, zero, zero. Tell us your stories. We'll sit here and listen. To the zero people that's on the call. There's no one there right now, of that's course. Great. But, but hey, you're watching for us. Like and sub like and subscribe and shaka. Okay, where you go. So I was making some notes today. He's making notes. <laughs> Let's share some ghost stories first. Ghost stories, okay. You nailed it. I'm trying to have you come around to ghost story. Open up to speaking. Okay. <laughs> Well, ghost stories. Yeah, we all have experienced some sort of a paranormal activity through a personal, through a story, through a person. And I got one for you today in the spirit of Halloween. First, let me, let me ask you while we we're doing this. Do you believe there are ghosts offhand or if someone just asked you? I believe, ghosts, what would you say? I believe in spirits that are in our 3D world in this planet Earth that have not yet that are spilled over from another dimension. Yes, I believe. I believe that you there are spirits. In ghosts. I believe in spirits. spirits that are spilled over from another dimension into our world. Yes. How's that different from ghosts? Same thing. It's okay. We call them ghosts. We call them. I typically There's think ghosts way. is like woo, 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 like a yellow. You know, we are. I think of a ghost as okay. Wearing a white robe and floating, woo, like that, right? That's a ghost, scary. But That's a ghost. Spirits, I believe in the spirit, and spirits could be demonic. It could be in, it could be in anybody's physical body or any realm. So I believe in the spirit. So yes, I believe in ghosts. Mm. Let's start there. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you believe that there's an afterlife. I mean, it kind of connects to religion and beliefs like that, but I'm just saying afterlife. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. A different right. dimension. Yes. As we live this physical body, this energy, right? There is an energy that propels us through through our senses, our smell, our eyesight, which uses most of our brain neurons, right? Our hearing, our touch, our taste buds. And they're the feel we have nervous system. The nervous system which is the energy that travels from our brain cortex down to our spine. This energy, I believe that that energy, once our heart, physical heart starts beating, no more blood gets pumped into our brain. Therefore, our brain physically dies. But that energy leaves the body to a different dimension. I, that's what I believe. Okay, so life. Yes. ghosts are nervous system activity. 
I mean, that if you want to summarize it, I would have to get into a technical paper, but just an overview, <laughs> just an overview. No, I think that makes sense. I mean, the nervous system has electricity. Correct. Yeah, it's like electricity in a, a smushy bag of, of like 70% water. Correct, yep. And then this electricity, we typically, speaking of energy, we usually, in the English language, we call it transference, right? Say, let's say I had a bad day. I come home to my wife and I vent and I trans, it's called transference. I transfer that energy to her, right? It's called transference, right? Yeah, boss That's, yells at me, I come home and yeah. I kick the dog. So that is a real thing. It's called transference and it's in the fourth dimension or whatever. I don't know. Uh, I don't have the English words to describe, but I do know that transfers is one way to transfer the energy. The other way to transfer the energy is called um transference and transcend right transcend you you probably heard things as uh, michael jordan he was able to transcend in his basketball game to a whole new level he's like a god he Go transcends above. Yeah. goes above and beyond of human comprehension he just has this transcending qualities almost uh, den god type of qualities in his basketball skills obviously he practices he does a lot of work in his practice so the someone game. maki dai is dead boosh then their spirit transcends, transcends. okay right it transcends yeah so, so those are it, the two words are you trying to instead of like staying around in you know around living people it's so transcends to another dimension another, right, when yeah. we die i think Level the energy right. so in the our living existence we're transfuse this energy as we're talking now we're sharing the energy right but when we die i believe we'll, something happens the energy transcends to another transfuses transcends to another dimension hmm. that's my it reminds theory. me of you like you know when they have like ghost things and they're sure trying to find ghost hunting and they're looking for them right and they uh, discover orbs. I never did like orbs because it's like a bug. I've seen those. So put them off, and, or it's a camera flare thing, or it's a reflection off that thingy. You know, well, uh, some orbs are kind of well. Okay, I don't know what that is, but it's a little glowing ball. I've seen them and many, they go, many times. Ooh, ooh. They kind of float. It looks like a dust dust particle. It just kind of floats. Sometimes they do this. Sometimes it just like floats. So you so, know it's not a dust. Wait, dust you, doesn't do that. Wait, do you you know of these or yes. you've seen them? I've seen them in person. Oh, I can testify. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I got a question for you. Yes, I Tell may have an that. answer for you. Okay. <laughs> Tell you about what? Tell me about the orbs you saw. Okay. This is what this is so, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was in 2015. Um, recent. Recent. And I worked at a place called Max Muscle. Right. It's an old business. I was the director at Max Muscle. It's supplement company on Kimoku Street. Oh, they, they, yeah, they had the there, you know, on Kimoku Supple, Street. Yeah, yeah. you've been there a couple of times. Yeah. So that place was built. I was told. I was told that place was built on old ancient Hawaiian um, burial ground. Okay. Now this for everybody is downtown Honolulu. The location. It's a building where all the other building. A lot of other buildings are. Continue. Right. Yep. Hawaiian burial ground. Hawaiian burial ground. Mm -hmm. This um, d was developed on a Hawaiian burial ground, and I was sold that that place has spirits floating around. Okay, I was like, okay. And we, of course, the owner was cool. They made peace with the spirits. I said they're not harmed because they believe into that, right? It's ble it's a blessed space. Sure. This so, is the people that rented that spot. The yep, the owners. This is and downstairs. Yeah, yep. it's below ground level. No, no, this is this is ground level on the Kimoku Street on the development. This is all ground level. We're not underground. Spirits, it doesn't have to be underground. Well, I thought you took stairs down. No, no, it's underground. Yeah, no, it's all underground. Okay, so it's above ground. Above ground, a uh, uh, level. And so that place had cameras, right? Every corner of security. And then in the back, we had a monitor. So that we would see, because of the way uh, uh, the red light, it's able to perceive a different... Um, different light so on the camera oh so it's infrared infrared thank oh. you so typically you know when you look for ghosts or or it's, you have to look through infrared because you see a different light it's a different our eyes cannot see that but in infrared we can typically it'll show it's us a like little night white. vision you can see it show us a little white dark places with infrared. Mm -hmm. well yeah i guess it's i don't know 
but it's really dark but if you if you shine infrared and the camera picks up that light yeah that light that you, light a medium mm -hmm. it show it's picking up the infrared light which our eyes aren't really adapted to. correct if you look at the yeah. flash if say an infrared flashlight you don't see that it's on unless you like look right at it to your red dot mm -hmm. yeah true true or sometimes you know when you're driving and you if you ever film you ever seen uh, tail lights blinking through that you ever see tail lights when you film it it blinks because it's it's picking up a certain frequency of the light right but our eyes cannot see that but you can only see that with the camera so back to the story yeah it's for infrared camera an infrared light looks like a spotlight mm -hmm. it's a different really different um the cameras infrared cameras mm -hmm. so in, you know and they said hey you know the owner said hey yes sometimes we see ghosts you know orbs flying i said and at that time i was open-minded i didn't believe or deny i was just open-minded and so i had to go see it for myself so we go back that's close-minded i wasn't open-minded or oh, closed-minded yeah. i said i want to go see it for myself sure i've never is ever, ever see exactly i've never ever seen an orb so i was thinking well if i see it with my own eyes I would i'd be curious be even if i believed it mm -hmm. yeah. so we go to the back room and whatever i can't remember it's been seven years but they came hey, we're peaceful come show us that you're here in the presence of you know we're they here did it in english yeah okay they just so sure enough several more orbs showed up yeah so it's like oh sh so i was like <laughs> you cannot deny that i was like wow so this is weird and then I would, I was so excited and I curious that I would follow up. And some days it would be blank, nothing. And other days, three or four would show up. But usually there'd be like one floating around, just kind of one. There's always one spirit, always one spirit wandering, you know. And I would think it'd be like a guardian or a guard or somebody, some old owner of that property, blown hundreds of years ago. But there's always be one, like one orb floating around in circles and just hanging out. And they were harmless. Wild. Did they ever know what that place was before? Old burial grounds. That's it? Just old burial grounds? The Hawaiian old burial grounds. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so, so that guy's like an orb whisperer. Come, little orbies. I mean, I was orb whisperer, but I did that too. I said, hey, come. And they came. So you do that, and they, they show up on the camera. It didn't work every time, but it worked sometimes. It just really depends. Wow. Thank you for um, the orb story. That's cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, yeah. I mean, so I'm a believer. I'm definitely a believer now. I'm open-minded to more possibilities. But I do um, understand that uh, f um, in physics, there's different, you know, in physics, we, we deal with fourth dimension, right, which is time. And time always comes with yes. gravity. Yeah, depending on who you talk to. But time would be the fourth dimension. Yeah. The three mm -hmm. up, down, you know, X, Y, Z. And then time is the fourth and, and, and space actually time and space I thought yeah i'll hold that thought well just you know they, they say time and space are kind of intertwined they are correct so they call it space time, time. continuum yeah because they're kind of intermixed it's and it's much theory. the same oh yeah that's science fact uh fact basically already, yeah, it's not really specific fact but it's a generally accepted theory by major amount of scientists <laughs> theory, uh, just theory. like electric Electro magnetic electro magnetic field. for elect I'm trying to electronic forces and magnetic fields are also intertwined, much like space and time. They are intertwined. If you have now this is absolutely true, it's called induction. You can look it up. If you have a wire, say a wire, and there's electricity going through it, mm -hmm. say it's going this way, it's actually direct current. Elect it's electrons, you know, they're negatively charged and they're going beep, 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 beep. One electron goes, it's like those little things that have the, the hydrogen collider. Those, those hydrogen collider, you know, those like four little balls that are pink, 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 pink. It's a, it's are a you talking about like a, a, a tater totter of magnets or the there's like about four metal ball bearings. You're talking about Newton's they're law. They're That's suspended. That's an example of Newton's law. Each reaction has a same and positive reaction, and it's perfectly equal and opposite positive. Newton's second yeah. law. Yes, but also it explains something how electrons go. Electrons don't flow through a wire like water flows through a hose. It kind of like, it has one hits here, and the other one hits there. So the electrons are going, it's like a domino. It's more oh. like dominoes than a flow. Okay. Electrons are negatively charged, right? 
-hmm. so they'll attract positively charged mm -hmm. or be attracted to positively charged things but here's the rub here's the induction here's the actually fascinating thing is that that electrical flow will produce a magnetic field and it goes a certain way so if the if the electricity is going this way it'll flow that way if electricity is going that way it'll be flowing this way mm -hmm. so around a wire counter yeah, that's there's some a, magnets right there's a magnetic field yeah. and so with a magnetic detector you can detect electricity going through walls that's why they have those stud finders that they use for that's what i should have brought up those toys that i call them toys now the like the ghost detector yeah yeah that's another thing what do you think about those like the emf I'm, that has a little light i've <laughs> never used them but i've seen on television i've seen yeah. that yeah I, the lights, I have no experience and i have no comment on that well if it was close to a magnetic field the little lights would go off right right energy because it's detecting the magnetic field mm -hmm. now all of that would just be plain old that's interesting science except they put in a ghost theory that ghosts or spirits, spirits yeah. are Opposite. made up of magnetic electro fields, mm -hmm. electromagnetic EM fields or EM forces. Mm -hmm. So if, like you said, your monkey died dead, and then all of a sudden your well, let's say uh, nervous system is moving forward. It's transcended mm -hmm. where it was, and it's still out there because uh, this. it goes into electromagnetic. It turns into electromagnetic field. It turns into a different dimension. Well, if the nervous system conducts electricity, right, then does it create a magnetic field? Is it does. That, I think it does. Is that where they get auras from? Mm -hmm. I think it does, yeah. And they also use another thing in science called the second law of thermodynamics, which energy doesn't just pop into existence or vanish out of existence mm. within a, a frame, like this frame. Mm -hmm. So if there was something here and it vanished, it's someplace else in another form or it's out of the system somehow it went out there. but within this framework like reality framework or the universe framework the universe okay reality our reality universal a living being has a certain amount of energy and when they die maki die dead mm -hmm. where does that energy go great question, question mark yep yeah. that's, so that's the question on this people use the Second law of thermodynamics to go, detect go the three D world to detect it right yeah. to put it into our world dimension yeah great yeah do that's, they use the EMF so that's why they that's a EMF that's a great question and on that topic yeah so let your audience to figure that you're out like, right man eh, well yeah, let the, maybe but I will share some more stories on the oh yeah please um, on the on the unidentified flying aerial flying you know objects right so. A, most recently, I don't know if you're aware, there was a uh, flying object that was detected by the Navy. This came out about 2017. And it was on the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, why did you say that guy's name? Go ahead, though. He covered it. Yeah, he covered it. And the, the captain, the 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 officer who was in, in charge, who was flying, who was flying the jet uh they were radioed and they were told that there is a white cap water in the ocean there are you no know, there are about 100 let me paint you the pictures there are 100 miles off the coast of san diego uh -huh. right in the navy ship uh -huh. and during their regular exercises they would take off and land on this on this um ship amphibious amphibious craft, of some craft sort. right and he the this captain was uh, radioed and he was told that hey sir we see white cap water and we're in the middle of the ocean it's glass water everywhere but they see an area with the white cap water so he was him being a leader he was told to go investigate it with a couple other jets so he did in a jet yep with some other jets and they're flying about twenty thousand feet right twenty thousand feet above the water 
which is far, but enough to see so what's going on. Uh, and he's done, you know, tens and tens of thousands of flat hours. So this guy's been in for over 20 years. So he's, you know, he goes to investigate it, to investigate this white uh, rift water in the middle of the ocean. And they get close to it. And sure enough, they see this Tic Tac object over it. Right. That's what he, he true story. That's based on what he's telling us. And this white Tic Tac object, and I get to the point, is over this white rift water. And when they look down, they, they, they got down closer to see it and they're getting closer. They see a big cross object. It looked like the size of Boeing 747. It was, you know, it was huge, several hundred feet long, right? 250 feet, probably like long, right? Very large cross object creating this white rift water. And there's a Tic Tac over it. And they got closer and closer and closer, and poof, the Tic Tac nosed them and disappeared. Poof, it just disappeared out of our 3D world comprehension. And, you know, about 30 seconds later, he was ready to again. And he said, sir, this tick, this object is here now. It was 60 miles away. It just poof, disappeared, and that's popped up 60 miles away. So scientifically, this object is able to manipulate gravitation gravitational mm -hmm. it's able to uh it's able to manipulate Gravity, time, time time and space space which is really profound in advanced technology yeah i mean so they that's know. this that's the story it's on joe rogan podcast i can write that's some UFO stuff i mean they know that they know it's some there's some trippy things with science like they know gravity exists they can measure gravity. I wouldn't want to say trippy. I would want to say unexplained. We're not tripping. We're not smoking well, pot here. We're not doing drugs. It's you not know? the sixties. We're we having a condone, legit condone drug use. science conversation here. You know? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, 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 I'm just saying no. This is no, no, I'm trying to not use the word trippy. Yeah, yeah. All right, but trippy for Halloween. Whoa. There are some scientific facts that are mind-boggling, but once you get to know them a little bit better, there's some. Times explainable, uh -huh. yeah. but a lot of them still are mind boggling, like the time, like induction. How does magnetism and electricity get intertwined? That's really strange. And here's something interesting gravity we know it exists, we can measure it, and interestingly enough, it is very small, very, very minute. Gravity, the force of gravity, is very minute, it's not very powerful. There's four known forces. Gravity is one of them. It's like really small. I mean, two objects that have mass will pull on each other with gravitational forces. One pulls on with its force, and the other one pulls so on with this force. Two positive and negative objects? No, it's not. It's negative gravity. And negative? No. That's, those are what's called right. electrical forces because mm -hmm. it's positive and negative. But with gravity, the Earth is pulling us to the Earth. But we're pulling the Earth towards us with our small mass. And there's a two-way street there. But it's insignificant compared to how big the Earth is. So all we can see is Earth's gravity normally. But on the microscopic or let's say, uh, atomic level. Right, where you get the into, hydride collider level, right? Where you get down to Avogadro's starting. number is so small that it's... it's, it's down to the boson particle. You know boson particle? Subatomic. Subatomic, yeah. Subatomic, you have like... First, the Higgs. first level is protons, neutrons, and electrons, and then they find out that those are made out of things, and you have quantum. They call it quantum because it's just a amount of smallness, and at, at that level, it's all quantum. So, when you're that quantumly small, then the electron is made up of actually the electron is the smallest, but the neutron, let's say, is made up of more boson Higgs quarks and, and this and that. Higgs quarks. It was just discovered recently. And over those, the last 10 years. yeah, those boson Higgs, two guys that are named after mm -hmm. them, that's a really strange one because it can produce solid mass from it's kind of like the string theory meets solid mass. That's why they call it the God particle, because mm -hmm. it created something out of nothing, mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. but not really. Which we will explain. We're getting closer to these ion But fight. mass is made up out of energy. But that, I mean, like, say, 
does that thing pop up out of here and then it pops up over here? What if it's a projection? Because we don't know anything about this unidentified whatever. Right. Proje you mean projection? So say the underground, underwater craft that's uh, I think possible it, craft yeah, that's X-shaped X or I think it was what it was doing. My theory, what this frothy foam water white it has craft tick water talk shaped thing which is physical object which right there. vanishes and then reappears and over the there. white craft the the white water like you know disappears it just goes back to glass water. so what if it's projecting that as an image maybe sort of hologramic mm -mm. or maybe it's projecting something they're able to project something and it stays solid no nope. once they're done projecting that disappears i think it was mm. And then it's like a flashlight. You turn it yeah. off. Where's the light? But go? We have to really think outside the box here. That's a good consideration. But I think I have a theory on this. And it was because it has an anti gravity, you know, anti gravity engine, like a micro, many, many. Uh, I like the flashlight in that example. I was thinking outside. As a miniature engine, it has a anti-gravity engine and i believe it needs cool energy and it gets it from salt right because salt conduces right the batteries salt conduces positivity and negativity right so i believe it was just windshield it was getting rehydrated if i may put it because the captain said that those things would be there for three four hours at a time so i think it was just getting replenished with energy maybe that's my theory so are they dead and then they're ghosts and they're haunting things? <laughs> they have that same connection with um, Bigfoot. Bigfoot and they're connected to UFO sightings. So they're wondering if Bigfoot itself is an interdimensional creature that shows up in connection with a dimension opening up. So Who knows? I have no knowledge on that. Yeah, those are very... But like in the I have ghost, no comment on that. I have no <laughs> knowledge on that at all. I will not comment. I mean, these are things that are out there. Part. But how about stuff that you've experienced personally? See, like I've. Had so yeah, back to the worms. Oh, I do have a real story stuff. to share. Yeah, we'll get to it. I had some ghost stories. Uh, stuff happened to me, and in the moment, I'm like, "Whoa, that's unbelievable!" I I can't explain that. I don't want to talk about it because all people think I'm crazy, more than you know usual crazy. And uh, so a long time I didn't say anything about it. And then I, you know, but my point being here is it was a wow moment at the time. And then later on, I just forget about it. And now I'm kind of more skeptical, especially with so many fakey things. Right. You're, you have knowledge and insight now. Right? right, right. But personal stories are where it's at. Yeah. I got one for you. Let's hear it. You want to hear it? Sure. Uh, when I was... Uh, oh, wait, just one more thing. Michael's going to tell us his personal story. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, a true personal story. Um, I was working uh, at a pizza parlor. Uh, Terrace Pizza and Grill in Georgetown, California. was exactly. where I was raised, California. Georgetown. You can Google it. And it's right. It's built right next to uh, a burial ground as well. Right. So this oh. is the... Common element, burial grounds, death. See, now we're talking about right? yeah, common death element, right? Makes ghosts. Yep, common element that we can understand. It was built right next to the burial ground, this pizza parlor. So we were closing up the sh the, the store. The question is: it a regular, regular burial ground, ground, like regular cemetery, cemetery burial? from eighteen hundreds, like, okay. from the gold era? All right, it's been there for one hundred fifty oh. years. Oh, all really? The gold oh, miners, very gold very gold miners came down there to. Be. Get some gold, and they were excited about the gold rush, and they came down there to get some gold. If you're stepping on my grave, dear buddy boy, but buddy, they built this town called Georgetown, a name after George Georgetown. It's a true place in the hills, Colorado and hills of California. And we wouldn't want to deal with that George big, puffy George Washington. General, no, George, George Washington. Pinkerton. No, no, George Washington was ever there. George, not a name, man named George. George Town. We're having an earthquake here. George Town. Anyways, back to the story. Yes. So it's next to a cemetery, loads of dead bodies underground. Right. We, I was, you know, I've been working here for about three years, just painting you the picture in a restaurant that makes pizzas and burgers, right? And locals go there. And yet again, I was given a disclosure 
by the owner. They said this place has is haunted, right? It's <laughs> I've haunted. never had that happen to me ever. And so we're closing. We turn off the lights, and we, we know we mop the floor every night. We turn off the lights, and and this bucket of flour, which sits on the shelf, and mind this, no door, nobody slammed any doors. There's no wind, nothing. This bucket of flour. That sits on the shelf. How much does that weigh? No, a bucket of flour, like a little pitcher, pitcher of water, but it's filled with flour. It's right over a. Uh, Five pounds. Uh, it's That's over, you know, it's it's over a um, machine that uh, that creates does that stuff. dough. It's a, over the dough machine, right? That's where we keep it, and we make the pizza dough special recipe. And I can tell you. Yeah. This bucket of flour sits over this dough machine, and so we turn off the lights, we close, and this bucket of flour falls over for no reason. No doors were slammed. Why this? There's nobody slammed any doors. There's no wind outside. Everything's quiet. This bucket of flour just falls over. It's like an open container. Yeah. And I just freaking clean the floors, you know? Yes, that's all I'm you noticed. Pissed. Yeah. I'm just mad now. I'm like, hey, I just sweep them off the floors. What the hell? <laughs> you know? Hey. So uh, pick your team. I knew it. Find yeah. you somewhere. So, and the the co the owner where of the restaurant it, where was it sitting at what was it sitting it sat on a shelf a shelf okay. about five feet up over the dough bucket you know that makes the dough, okay. the dough. Yeah, it's yeah. always there and I, mind this i worked there for three years it's never happened before right so falls but over. I, i've heard i've heard stories and i don't pay attention i'm a 16 17 year old kid i don't care i just want to go out and freaking go sleep you know i just want to go i don't care about these ghost stories but you will. It happened to me. Oh, you will. I saw the bucket <laughs> fall down, and now I'm tripping out. I mean, like, look at what you is use going the on. word tripping, tripping out. As a Put kid. tripping in the comments. Tripping. <laughs> You're tripping, right? For no reason. I. <clears throat> so yeah, it freaked you out. I mean, it, it freaked me out, and I tell my boss. He he's also the owner, owner's son. He um, brother-in-law. He's a brother-in-law. Of the owner restaurant and i say hey man what what's going on what is this what is going on and he says oh yeah this this happened before and he shared me his ghost story and we're just i clean everything up and we're just laughing like this is bizarre how do you explain this and he told me that's when he told me we are next to the burial grounds and this happened before what happened to him did he get bucket spill the door was slammed or something. I don't know, like or randomly. Yeah, yeah. So, I had a door slam once. Was, I mean, it's windy right now, right? That most wind. people will explain. Oh, it's the door, wind, blah blah. See these things blowing and. But sure. on the quiet day, let me tell you, it's paranormal. On the quiet day, when everything is dead silent, you could hear it. You could hear a pin drop, right? Ding, ding. Door shutting. That is eerie, right? Okay. Uh, quick, Eerie. Question. quick question night or day night that's the other uh commonality they come out in the in the storytelling they come out at night but my experience at the old max muscle place here in honolulu was during the day i saw the orbs right they're friendly orbs but at night that's when the ghosts are trying to tell you something hey we're here you know that they're trying the to tell you something. yeah they're trying to communicate like, what are they trying to tell you this i mean it's a little ball floating around no at night it's when they try to communicate to you when they you know they're trying to get your attention for some reason for some reason they try to tell you hey i'm here talk to me uh like please bless me too so i can go to the other world please i don't know you know, I don't it, figure it you know that's a common thing and i've heard that from uh an actual priest person who was talking about ghosts and if they exist i'm like well I listen to this guy because he's an actual Roman Catholic priest talking about ghosts and why they exist. And he said that, well, for the Catholics, I don't know, you don't have to be one, but in the afterlife, when people die, Maki die dead, they uh, go to purgatory. It's kind of like a holding pattern. And people have a wrong idea about purgatory. They think it's like punishment. No, it's like if it's actually if you're if you're earmarked to go to heaven, but you're in this holding space for the last judgment day whenever that happens at the end of the world 
So people are all in purgatory and they need your prayers. Now that's the idea, idea right. for the Roman Catholic thing. So this guy's saying that there's been quite a number of pretty heavy ghost sightings where they come up and bash on the priest. I mean, they're just like rattling things, throwing things down and going, getting their attention. Or actually, apparition, appearing, uh, what do you call it, manifesting in front of the person to ask them to pray for them so they can poof out of the purgatory scene. It's happened to this guy called St. Audrey Pio. It's happened to plenty of others. They just, hello, who are you? Oh, I'm so-and-so. I used to live in this place that you reside in called the seminary. Oh, really? What room? Oh, room 115. Oh, really? That's nice. And, and the guy had died years earlier in a fire in that room. Mm. That kind of oh, yeah, that's interesting. Those, those are the stories that I do hear. You do hear it quite often, you know. That's those are common stories. They want your attention. They want to move on. They want your prayers. Um, like vampire for prayers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> From a Catholic or almost some point, yeah, maybe they want to be blessed, get prayers so they can move on to the other. Yeah, like just for, like, uh, asking for forgiveness, perhaps, right? Yeah. Who they, knows? These are all this because they, they also say, yeah, these are just theories, and that's all they are. They're just theories. It's like what people think and think what they believe what they're trying think. to explain the unexplainable type of thing like right? for example fact, ghosts, are, ghosts are made up of emf energy, energy. Mm -hmm. it is just, just a theory it's... without that those those ghost things are just... i think i think it's a scientific theory or not you can explain scientifically well they're using with... science to make theory mm -hmm. so but it's completely but not as true. far but but as far as reasons why they're here what do they want that and it's anybody's guess but uh, I, it's common knowledge that they're just kind of strapped in this dimension in our dimension our world yeah i got this question that kind of bugged me like why is there only like a few um appearances to people i mean there's got to be billion uh, there's eight billion people living on the world and there's almost that many dead people in the world's humanity past so Basically, there's many, 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 many billions and billion, I mean, billions and of dead people. Why do we only see very few? How come there's not billions of ghosts, right? Okay, just doing logic. Like, how come there's just a great a question? Very smattering, and it's actually very rare. So these ghost hunting shows that show ghosts every time they go, they go to haunted places to cover it, but and it's they always have results. It's because perhaps we cannot communicate to their dimension. Well, perhaps there are billions and billions of of this energy, right? Of this energy that's in the universe. It's all dispersed in the universe. Back to the universe, the unexplainable. There's dark energy, and then there's dark matter, right? It's a scientific fact. There's this energy. Reason. Yeah. As our universe is expanding, it's going faster and faster. There is this dark matter, which consists of eighty. Uh, they, I wrote it down. Eighty-six percent of the space, dark matter. And uh, they are able to detect it through gravitational lensing. On, um, yeah, I was doing. It's called uh, so like a bullet cluster, for example. They were able, This is a very known uh, cluster. They're able to detect it through these telescopes. It's gravitational lensing, so they're able to detect this dark matter. Uh, Basically, gravitational it's, lensing. It's um, it's accepted scientifically because there's no better. Explanation. It's the best explanation they got. That we got. And we even just go though based it's not on like, that. Mm -hmm. It's not like we can prove it. They can't really prove it. Yeah. Right, but right. the best scientific minds For now, are saying yeah. this is the best explanation. Yep. You got this much matter, 100% matter to account for. And you got like, wait a minute, there's a missing gap. Mm -hmm. And so they have dark energy and dark matter. Yep. And dark matter consists of about 85, 86%. And dark energy, which is more potent and powerful, right, consists of about 16, the remaining of that. Do you know why they matter. call them dark? Unexplainable. Exactly. Bingo. That's they just can't. They just can't. And this theory has been accepted since actually 1992. Yeah. I mean, you can Google it. And that's we. So it's anything that's exploratory, people just explore it and put time into it. Energy, sure. So what's your, what's your, it. What's your um, connection here with, with dark? with uh ghosts and our three world i believe there's a lot of unexplainable events that happen in this planet earth including the ufos how they're able to appear disappear the ghosts the possessions all of that is in a different dimension 
which is all part of that expanding universe. Okay. Most that's of it's my most of it's connection. in another dimension. Yeah, that's my connection. So they pop over here because they have unfinished business. Perhaps. That's perhaps this one. And idea. they're trying to communicate to us, tell us something. And I'm confident that, that people, little creep murdered me for my gold. I'm trying to get back to him. Now I want my story. To Georgetown be told. and Georgetown gold mining, right? They built their damn pizza factory over my grave. So let me spill some dough and make him off the floor again, because I have resentment. You clean it up. <laughs> clean up this, motherfucker. <laughs> clean up this. Be my slave. <laughs> What's wrong with you? So yeah, you yeah, can make all sorts of jokes. I'm 187 this. years old. Keep mopping the floor <laughs> until your feet fall off. <laughs> and there's also yeah. like 90, I think 90 percent of the mind is subconscious. Correct. So that's why people have a lot of fun with that dreams if you have your basically you know they put it out there in the universe they're kind of putting it out there in their subconscious and i think that's the thought that energy dark un unexplainable right hey well the human mind is a really weird territory in itself uh, but i have a theory on that too we have our conscious mind and then like 90 percent of it's just subconscious it's, it's still out there i have a theory awake. on that too so the here's my theory dark matter <laughs> dark matter right which consists of 80 whatever majority 85 86 a percent a lot like i think well, that's a much. yep that's the something unexplainable and i think the subconscious mind falls into that unexplainable dark matter for example let's use news we see something on television oh most recently speaking of the halloween spirit in Seoul, South Korea, 154 people died. 57, 157. Okay, in, in counting. This just happened a day or two ago. Squashed. Squashed. How does it affect me here you know. in Hawaii? It doesn't. But it's in my subconscious. But it doesn't affect me. Oh, well, you know about it. I know about if it. If you were so empathetic, it's in my where you're like, oh, I feel bad. I feel bad, but, it, you know, I move on. I pray for them, you know, send out that energy back to that positive light energy. Right. So it's in your subconscious. It's in my subconscious. And but I send out the positive energy and pray then, for them, for the families. And then. And that's my theory. It's part of that unknown dark matter, right? Unexplainable. Our subconscious is in our brain. It's, we're, we, we have it. We know about it. But how... Does it affect me? No. Things around the world don't affect me unless there's a hurricane, right? Here in Hawaii, we have a hurricane. And then? And then that dark energy, that energy negatively impacts me. It destroys my house. And then? And then it personally <laughs> affects my body, mind, and spirit. And, and then? then? <laughs> that's the conclusion. Dark matter, dark energy. Subconscious yeah, the, mind. Yeah, I mean, they're... Personal and then, and then. <laughs> in Hawaiian culture, and then that's and then what we, we put a layer around your neck, and then and then we tighten it. No, and then <laughs> and then, then we make the tourists the actual tourist attraction. Okay, let's not. The, there's no, there's yeah. the experiences that are personal, you know, because it has to do with trauma. Say, for example, loss of a loved one, loss of a family member, and then. And then that person, and then like, they yeah. oftentimes will see an apparition of their uh, deceased person saying mm -hmm. goodbye, everything's all right, this kind of thing. And then, and that's it. So it's like uh, uh, there's personal experiences. It's like which um, affect us uh, personally, literally affects us. Yeah, through the way we can live. It's like our decision making, our conscious mm -hmm. mind, which is subconsciously when we sleep. We our loved ones would dream about them, we think about them throughout the day, and subconsciously they kind of re uh, they kind of um, what's the word manifest themselves in our dreams, yeah. Right? We're, we're we think about people that are close to us and we worry about them and their safety. We want to make sure it so we're, we're always curious about things that are dangerous and they like these tragedies, right? They are tragedies. If I was there and I wasn't involved and I just saw a bunch of freaking squashed people because they don't jam up and they squash each other and they, and, and they would be like oh i would personally be impacted and i would be in the energy of that space mm -hmm. right? right but but it's far away it's like a it's like people are curious about it. it's like because they're always curious about okay what happens and then what happens next 
right? Or so yeah, I, I no back to the gravitational <laughs> no gravitational segue to gravity. Yeah, yeah, no, this is all because we live in a we, we live in a gravity based world. So and this energy is gravitational. Time, time what's the theory? Uh, Newton's second law. Time and space are interwoven. Correct. Gravity is its own thing. And I think there is this energy which also has gravity. So when an event happens, if it's big enough, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pull a lot of energy towards it. Attention, right? Energy, you might, that type of energy. You got something going on. So that's the theory I'm working on. I haven't quite figured it out, but it has well, here, some, let me add to it. So, so, here, let me try to shorten. I just try to shorten the thesis. Is okay. There's Einstein tells us that energy can transfer, be transformed into matter. Matter. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. Because matter. Bingo. Matter is what matters. Let me tell you. <laughs> matter matters. Yeah, matter no, matters. No, but it's, it's all the molecules that make this up. You know, its weight is different in a different gravity. Uh, Earth's gravity is pulling it, so it has a certain weight. If it's on the moon, it's one sixteenth of its gravity. But the matter stays the same. It's this amount of matter. But any amount of matter, you're made up of matter as well. So any amount of matter, those mo those molecules and atoms can be transformed into energy and hold that thought energy we, we know that the universe i'm is, holding it <laughs> hold that energy ball. Right. let's not lose don't, our don't, audience don't upstage and we know that uh <laughs> that we know that universe is made up he helium oxygen uh carbon and what's the fourth one nitrogen nitrogen thank you we know <laughs> so those are the four elements of the whole including dark energy dark matter those are the main ones. Mains, There's yeah, lots main of other ones, ones. <laughs> that the universe is made of. What is it again? Nitrogen, carbon, oxygen, and um, helium. Helium. Thank you. Those are the <laughs> four. No, helium. You're right. It's nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen carbon, and helium, and helium. Whatever your favorite and is. Helium. Yeah. yeah. Those are the four main ones. Helium probably is like 80, 90 percent of the universe. Carbon <laughs> is that energy as you were holding that thought. Carbon. I mean, hydrogen, hydrogen, not helium. Hydrogen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to Google that now. I, don't know if, I, I thought it was helium, but you're right. It could be hydrogen. Two hydrogens together make up a helium. Ah, so it is a hydrogen. It's hydrogen. When two hydrogens are stuck together making a helium, it's very stable. It's a very stable. It's one of the noble gases. They call it noble because it doesn't affiliate with other gases. Okay, guys. Here's the common elements. Oxygen. We breathe on planet Earth. Carbon, which emits tree bark carbon, right? That's number three. Nitrogen. And then? And helium. Helium. Well, they're meaning hydrogen. Because hydrogen. hydrogen you're right. Hydrogen. hydrogen. Hydrogen is number one. Helium is number two. Oxygen is number three, and carbon is number four. Bingo. Okay. Hydrogen, helium, oxygen. Yep, those are the main ones. When you got something that has carbon and those stuff, you're talking about organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Organic chemistry. It's and that stuff. I so you know back to events happening around the world and how Dark does matter. it affect us? You know how does it affect us? But here's the thing that you touched on that you said you had this theory cooking, and I'm like going to add to that cooking theory what the energy to matter connection which is the e equals mc squared thing so the c squared is a constant it's big speed of light and it's squared so it's a big constant but you know, when you divide those things it's a teeny bit of matter makes a big amount of energy if you changed it completely what is matter affected by gravity E equal E energy equals and the apple gravity. E energy e equals M, which is matter. Matter or mass. M C squared. C squared. Carbon squared. C. <laughs> Carbon squared. C is a uh like a cliff note for the speed of light. Oh, if they use C because they're saying they're trying to emphasize it's a constant. Energy and then there's people that are going to well, the speed of light is not a constant, blah, blah, blah. But basically, does, speed of light is as fast as it goes, so it's a constant. Yeah. So it is a, it's a, 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 like a law of nature. It's really constant. So the seed of uh, the C, oh. the seed of 
the speed of light squared is a hell of a lot. It's 186,000 miles per second. Let's right. square that. Okay, while he's doing that, I'm going to tell you something secret. No. <laughs> His theory might be interesting because matter or mass mm -hmm. is affected by gravity. So what if dark energy is affected by gravity? So if something tragic happened, like the Hindenburg came down, oh, the humanity, and people died, and it's a tragedy, and all that energy that people are expelling or generating or from dying, expelling, that that type of dark energy, that energy has some type of possibly like matter is attracted by gravity. Maybe it's attracted by gravity. Maybe that's why houses stay haunted with that thing that goes over and over again, that stone tape theory thing. It's, yeah, it's like a, a repeating goes. frozen in time. They just keep repeating stuff. So that's a good theory. And I was reading on the scientific uh, level. Research. Yeah, research. Gravity, dark matter here. Let me pull it up. And you, I know, Keith, you will, this will click for you because you are, here it is. I but was reading that. Why about ghosts? Okay. Most, back to the universe. Most, I'm <laughs> reading a cliff note here. Most of the universe is made up of a dark energy. A mysterious force, that's what we're talking about, mysterious force, ooh, that drives the accelerating <laughs> expansion of the universe. The next largest ingredient is dark matter, which only interacts with the rest of the universe throughout its gravity. Back to the gravity, right? Matter, gravity. Normal matter, good job. Normal matter, including all of the visible stars, planets, and galaxies, make up of less than 5% of the total mass of the universe. Wow. So the, everything in the universe, as far as we consider, is physically there. Mm -hmm. Stars, planets, galaxies, mm -hmm. all that kind of Correct. stuff. It's like 5%. Astronomers, so what's the other 95%? Yes. Here it so is dark Ast matter and dark energy. Astronomers cannot see dark matter directly, but they can study its effects, and it's probably known mm. through a bullet cluster. That's the most famous one. The bullet cluster, they can research, see, they can see the light. Bullet as in, pew, 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 pew. yeah, okay. funny, right? Easy to well, yeah, here it is. They can see the light bent, bent from the gravity of the invisible objects called gravitational. Lensing. Yeah, lensing is gravity affecting light, which is really, really interesting because is gravity a wave or is it a particle? That's a big, that's a big, it's because it's right when you get to Avogadro's number and it's teeny tiny, where anything smaller than that is uh, quantum physics. That's why they're trying to find out through the Large Hydro Collider underneath French and but Swiss right Alps, right? The guard particle, they're trying to discover it, answer that question. Is it a light or is it a particle? <laughs> answer the god particle question now. The particle that is called the Higgs and Bose particle or the quote god Higgs particle. Boson. It, Higgs boson. <laughs> it's a boson, right? Higgs. I love this topic. There, we're so uh, they're we're named so after the scientists, so it's a scientist named Higgs. So, those are, are fractions of like muons or fractions of gluons of these these subatomic particles. So once you get to the atomic level and smaller than that subatomic, it's quantum physics. Quantum physics isn't exactly like mm -hmm. Newton physics that we all know. But quantum Which is a whole new field of research and that completely, I can barely comprehend it. It's a different language. It's Most scientists don't. We yeah. can talk about it and theory, understand it basically. But done to really get to the meat of oh, quantum we, physics. We know that there's dark matter and we know that there's dark energy. We know the gravitational lensing. But we do know something. Light, right? And they figured this out a long time ago in science. Where they're, well, they didn't figure it out. Well, light. Dark matter does not emit any light. No, but and cannot be light, seen directly. So it cannot, it cannot be stars or planets. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, light itself, right? At a certain small point, they don't know if it's a wave, like light wave, or a particle, like poo poo, poo poo. Right, there it, it is. Kind of behaves like both. Yep. And so that's the weirdo part, right? Yep. To answer your question, scientists are using a variety of techniques across disciplines of astronomy and physics to hunt for there dark is. matter. Bullet point: particle collider, such as the Large Hadron Collider. Hadron Collider, yeah. Cosmology Hadron. instruments such as WMAP and Planck's. 
Max Planck's direct detection experiments, including CDMX, Hanon, Zeppelin, Warp, ARDM, and others. I don't know what those are. Yeah. I'm and not losing the audience. <laughs> indirect detection experiments, including gamma ray detectors, Fermi from space and Cherkov telescopes from the ground, neutrino telescopes, ice cube antis, antimatter detectors, Pamela ASM 02, and X ray and radio facilities. And wow. then, and what does wow. all that mean? Those are all the all of the variety of techniques that the humanity is using to try to figure out what all this is. The universe is. <laughs> You know what colliders are, right? I know a uh, large hadron collider, yes. Which is what? It, it's So basically it smashes electrons at the speed of light, and it takes a picture of it, and you see what happens. And these this energy diffuses. It creates, you know, of course we know now that these electrons that come together, which are two negative particles, right, come together, two electrons, they come together and they create sub what happens when they collide they diffuse and they create sub particles and they smash makes, into, yeah they smash into smaller particles one of the i mean they use makes, they use electrons because they're super super teeny mm -hmm. and they can make them go to like 99.99 percent of the speed of light, of light yeah. but not the speed of light though but close but they smash them and they into little particles and then they spin up so the advanced civilization right that is more advanced in the our humanity that we know in the common science. They have answers to all of this. Atlantis. I don't know. Whatever you want, Atlantis. <laughs> whatever. I don't know. What? Some wait. Who has knowledge of all this? It's. I'm wondering where you were going with that. I'm, I'm well, confused. I'm. Uh, you know. You know. In human. In human spirit, our spirit are in dna we are driven to figure out where we live our existence right we have this yearning to go to the stars right it's our uh -huh. it's in our dna right? yeah it's, just yeah. as baby turtles are born they go to the ocean into the water because they program they know where they need to go and their instinct is to go there to, to stay alive it's programmed and my theory is that our instinct is to figure out where we are located in the universe who who created us so existence existence so it's the god particle that inside us we're kind of seeking god or our creator right our creator. or if we want to be secular what how does the universe make us understand the universe and where we lay in our universe yeah it's That's like us. a science and just let it be that's it and it's like let it be so and then indeed what about ghosts ghosts back to ghosts well i mean i'm a believer that's i think i already answered that question i'm a believer in ghosts and i've had two experiences to recap one growing up working at, at the pizza parlor flower uh, flower uh story and then the other one uh, here in hawaii where we're filming from on kimoku street oh, uh, a location a store that i was working at over a burial ground i saw orbs on infrared light and with that we're coming up in an hour Okay. Well, time passed by very, very fast. I heard a ghost talking to my ear once. It was in Montana. And this place was supposed to be haunted by a little girl. But the place was a ghost town, abandoned town. And in the 1850s, when they had gold, the sheriff and his deputies got hung. Mm. Uh, but they, it was in the middle of winter they can dig into the ground so they had them on this slab of a foundation of a building they were going to build a courthouse it turned into a hotel later it's just a slab a foundation and they put them there until they were able to bury they hanged the sheriff they accused him falsely too unfinished business and so later that house got red brick two-story and it was like when the coaches and carriages came and stopped it was pretty fancy called the beat hotel and it's supposed to be haunted by the little girl who drowned in the creek. The little girl in the blue dress. So the guy goes up, the, the professor goes, hey, we're going to go, this is an 1800s gold town. It has all the buildings. We're going up there ahead of this video camera. And he goes, oh, this building's haunted. And the door opened. And a pretty big wooden door. 
And I was like, oh, look, I videotaped the door opening when you said it was haunted. So they're all yakking away, two professors, all alone in the building, except for them, yakking away about 30 feet ahead of me. This huge room, huge. It had a video camera, too. And it was like 12, 20-foot ceiling. It was like this. It was just blank other than that. The windows were closed. There was no wind. And it was during the day, 3 o'clock in the afternoon around there. And then right over my shoulder, like this close, so calmly said, What do you say? Can you help me out? I was like, what? I whipped around like that. And there's nothing. There, this is the middle of the day. Not in the middle of the day, 3 o'clock. There's like no one there. I mean, like, and, like, and let's let's set the tone. You were not drinking. No. You were not smoking pot. No, you were not doing drugs. No, I was not under the influence. Okay. Under, okay. Not That's under the, the influence. Audience wants to know. By the way, disclosure: I was not under influence with my two stories either. I was completely stone sober, so I know I wasn't hallucinating. We are aloha. Honesty is the best policy. Yep. I believe you. I'm just saying that, despite something like that, still nowadays I'm like. Come. Yeah, it's baffling, yeah. I think the thing is to find out uh, how we look at those things and how they uh, Affect, come across that understanding. Because yeah. I don't think ghosts are allowed to contact human beings. Something oh. tells me there's like a rule mm -hmm. that you're not supposed to, it's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. so Especially it, when you heard, help me, right? Like what? It's a, can you help it's me like, out? It's like he's, it's like this spirit is trapped somewhere where he doesn't want to be, right? It's not. And when you think about that, his dead body was right at that spot so after they mean, hanged him falsely. Oh, falsely. Oh, my goodness. So this yeah. is, uh, is um, that's why you said help me. Unfinished Maybe business. he was trying to get justice. Maybe yeah. He was I, asking you, hey, look into my case, dig it up, and bring it up to the authorities so this case tell, can yeah. be properly closed with it's justice. Like, yeah, because he was... He was uh, you know, he had, you know, it was in the 1800s, they had their, you know, dirty business. And even his deputies are probably a little bit dirty, too. But these guys didn't do, they didn't steal the gold like the, they were accused of. And vigilantes round them up and just, without a trial, hanged them on his own gallows. So he's probably like, tell my story. Tell my story to everybody. And so I started writing a screenplay. Wow. Thanks for yeah. saying that. That's really, that's that's actually impactful to but, me. In, because justice, I you know, I want justice for people. I'm a just person. Especially yeah. how painful is it if you're innocent and you get and you're hurt right, or wrongly right, accused. Right, right. That's like a great pain. That's a great pain. And that's that's I have no words for that yet. It's uh it's unfathomable pain that uh, requires a lot of uh, healing time. I yeah. think time will Heal the pain to where you know for example we see people we learn that there are people that are wrongly uh, put in prison and you know five years later ten years later they get released and then they seek justice right Re yeah. uh, reparations but being in the moment i mean can you imagine someone picks up on it right like this ghost story please help me and someone picks up on it and does something about it. Right? Gives gives you fighting chance. There's a great movie, by yeah. the way. 